Welcome back. Today I'm going to make something called Okonomiyaki. It helps if you say it like a samurai. In Japanese that means that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh. 100% true. Actually, don't take my word for it. It's probably bullshit, but that's what us uh, Westerners think uh, that means. It's kind of like a Japanese savory pancake. Like a Japanese version of a galet. Well, maybe not really. Yeah, actually kind of. The magic ingredient in okonomiyaki is something called nagaimo, which is like a root, tuber, root vegetable thing uh, that you grate up really, really fine and it's kind of foamy and uh, slimy and a little bit gross, but you add that to your batter and it makes it really light. Now, I don't have that. So uh, I thought I'd try something different. We're gonna waz up some tofu. I only have the firm stuff. So I'm gonna whip this up into something and put that in with it and uh, see how that works out. I left it kind of wet. Normally I dry it out a bit, but I think the moisture is okay here. So let's fire that up and see what we get. All right, no guarantees there. We shall see what happens. It has some structure, it is a little bit light, but who knows. Okay. All right, we're gonna put in a cup of flour here. And, oh, that's a mess. Quarter teaspoon of salt. Quarter teaspoon of baking powder. Quarter teaspoon of sugar. As you notice, the baking powder is definitely gonna add some fluffiness to it. But there's a lot of uh, cabbage in this thing, so I think that kind of weighs it down a bit. All right, let's throw in that tofu. Now, another thing the Japanese love is something called dashi. Dashi is basically, what the hell is dashi? It's like bonito, what is bonito? It's shaved pieces of uh, some sort of fish that I can't recall what it is now for some reason. Something tells me it's like anchovies, like an oily fish, but maybe it is anchovies, anyway. <laughs> You know who knows that kind of shit? Fucking Google! Okay, so there's our tofu. And you're also going to want... Oh, so I was back to my bonito thing, my dashi. Uh, normally you would put dashi in this, which is that a stock made out of that, you know, fish thing. So I'm just gonna use good old veg stock. Yeah, since I do not partake of the dead animal pieces. So that should turn into a, like a, I think a fairly thin batter. Oh, it is quite light actually. Hmm. I'd be surprised. Now consistency may be an issue here. I just get the feeling that it should be a little wetter. Just a little water. So since this is as you like it, I'm going to test the limits of that and uh, do whatever the hell I want with this. So, oh yeah, I'm liking that a little better. You know, it should be pancake batter-ish, really. And essentially, the thing is, you're supposed to 
sit that in the fridge for an hour. It's unclear to me if this will actually do anything, being that there is none of that Nagaimo in here. I think there's probably some sort of fermenting process going on with that Nagaimo that uh, is why you do that. But we're going to give this a go. Maybe you could add a little bit of yeast to this. I don't know. We'll put this in the fridge for an hour. While you're waiting for that to do whatever the hell it's going to be doing, um, we're going to chop up a little veg. Now, normally you would put a whole head of cabbage in there, but I only got a half. So I'm going to make up the difference with some shredded carrot. And uh, I'm just trying to think about how fine I should shred it. I suppose we'll do this one. That should make it about the same fineness as the cabbage, I think. Alright, for the cabbage. Take out that root. And it's got to be cut pretty fine. Now this is one of those, uh, hmm, not really a Napa cabbage. I don't know what this is called, actually. It's got a name. Everything does. Uh, anyway, Napa cabbage would be nice in this. But you like, you want fit thin, short pieces. You don't want like big, long strings. So, you know, cut accordingly. Take shavy bits off as you're going. Or chop it down, I suppose, after you're done. All right. All this business goes in your batter. Normally it would just be cabbage. And then you fry that up and on top of that, you put your toppings. And it's the toppings that's the as you like it business. Most of the time the toppings include like dead pieces of pig, ocean shrimp, uh, and then it's ginger, pickled ginger is common, green onion, and that kind of stuff. Okay, don't eat the meat, so not doing that. So I'm, I'll probably do some green onion. I do have pickled ginger. I might include that. I'm thinking not at this point because I don't think it's going to go. But I do have some snow peas. And uh, I am going to try and make something out of quinoa that's a little bit crispy, crunchy. The pancakes are not bad for crunchiness, but it's nice to have a little bit of extra, you know, crunch on the top. So I'm going to try and make some sort of quinoa uh, thing to put in it too. And then you cover that with a uh, okonomiyaki sauce, which um, I think a lot of people use bulldog sauce, which is probably what we're going to use, but it's okonomiyaki sauce is like, what the heck is that? It's like you're going to need ketchup, Worcester sauce, oyster sauce, and sugar, and you just mix that into a sauce. I'll you know, put the, put the, where it's going to be, somewhere over there, recipe down there for that. And then they uh, squirt mayonnaise, which is like actually not North American mayonnaise, it's Japanese mayonnaise. When you're cutting up beans or peas, remember, the universe invented inertia for a freaking reason, and this is one of them. Get them, line them up, knock them back, take the tops off, flip them around, knock them back the other way, flip them around, and there you go. Don't waste your time going by each one. Stupid. Vermi crispy quinoa. I got a half a cup of quinoa cooked in stock. I'm going to add some flour to that. I don't know how much I'm going to add at this point. We shall see. That was maybe a quarter cup. And some salt and qua pepper. And let's kick it up a bit with some paprika and smoked paprika. Now, I know this is going to be a little bit southwestern, but it's as you like it, so I can do whatever the hell I want at this point. Egg. We'll see if we need another.
a little wet yet. He pawned it up a bit with some panko crumbs. That seems all right. Let's cook that up. So I got just frying oil in there. Oh yeah, it does seem like it's not gonna hold together actually. Hmm. I'll give it one go here. All right, it's holding together so far. Now I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is only cook one side of this, which, for reasons which will become evident later, perhaps. All right, since we're, we're looking pretty good there, I'll do another one. So you can see, these, these are pretty, pretty thin. Oh, and I can see that other one's getting nice and brown, so I think I'm gonna pull that out. Here's the paper towel I'll be starting on fire later. Oh, so that's lovely. So only one side. Only did one side. There we go. Oh, I was supposed to lay away from me, I know, but I didn't. Because I'm living on the edge, people. Living on the edge. Peak, very nice, nice and crispy. Quinoa is pretty good for that. Like it, uh, it's got some nice crispy crispability in it, and it's one of those complete proteins, I think, which I assume means it just contains a reasonable amount of every amino acid. I assume. I don't know. I'm not a very good vegetarian when it comes to knowing what's going on. If you if you just eat normal shit and just avoid the meat, if you just cook for yourself, eat lots of variety of stuff, you're gonna be fine. However, this meal is particularly uh, high in protein. I gotta say, with the egg, tofu, quinoa, just gonna be loaded with protein. I probably won't be able to sleep. All right, the batter is out of the fridge and I'm gonna say, doesn't look any different. Only thing I can think of is maybe it gives it, uh, builds up a little gluten in it, or like I said before, the Nagaimo has some magical properties that I don't know about and you know, it gets fluffier when it's in there, but it is what it is. So let's move on. Concoction, add four eggs. Oh, she's got some bounce to her, eh? Oh yeah, not sure if that's a good sign or what, but... Oh yay, no eggshells. Must be my lucky day. Now, texturally... Hmm, I'm not... I'm not liking the... I'm not liking how thick it is. No, well, actually... Well, maybe it's okay. So this definitely is pancake batter-ish. I'm a little concerned that when I put all the veg in, it's just, it's not going to coat. So maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll add it to some of the veg and then uh, work the rest of the veg in later. So I'm gonna take out some of my carrot and cabbage mixture from the bowl and add this. All right, and work that in. I think she can probably handle a bit more. And you know, I think I'm gonna call it quits there. That seems like pretty good consistency to me. Cooking ain't no science, people. You gotta do it by just intuition sometimes, so. Okay. Now, this is my leftover pizza toppings and I'm just gonna throw my cabbage and carrot in there. I'm gonna stir fry this whole mess up and that's gonna be part of the topping. 
All right, here we go. Hot pan, a little bit of oil. Now I'm not gonna. I am not gonna cook this for very long. So high heat and maybe try and brown the underside. Don't like stir it too much. Brown the underside a bit. Get some color on there. And don't put any salt in because that'll just make it leak water all over the place. You don't want that either. Even though I'm not positive green onion is going to work with this thing, I'm going to chop some up and put them on the side anyway. Just in case. Because there's something nice about the fresh smell of green onion, I tell you. All sparkly new. Here's my quinoa patty. Now, my, what I want to do here is I want to cut them into like strips. If they'll have it. And I think, yeah, that's going to work. So I'm just going to do that for all of them. So for these to end up tasting any good, you're going to need a, a griddle that's uh, going to heat up to about medium high. You're going to need a bottle of sake and a lovely bamboo cup to drink it out of. Anything less, it's going to turn out like shit. Grilling and drinking. It's the American way. Come by. While I'm waiting for this to heat up, I'm going to make a little bit of that Japanese mayonnaise I was talking about. Oh, and I bet this isn't even focused, so just wait. I'll be back. Okay, is that better? All right. Regular old fashioned American mayonnaise. You're going to notice that I do everything just by appearance. I'm very superficial and shallow. Now, I don't really want to put the f down on this hot griddle, but we're going to add some rice vinegar. And that looks about right to me. And sugar. And then I should really get a whisk. All right, now, since I didn't go from any sort of recipe, we're gonna use the old taste test. That seems pretty good. It's not too tart, so I like it. So we'll go with that. Now wait till you see what I put it in. Here's my Japanese mayonnaise. Oh, it's got a fancy applicator. Makes fun, fun shapes on stuff. Now, and I just realized, you know what Japanese mayonnaise is? It's like salad dressing. Like it's coleslaw dressing, essentially. <laughs> Vinegar and sugar. Uh, just throw some pepper in there and you've got yourself a nice coleslaw dressing. So <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. The griddle is good and hot. Canola oil or any sort of you know, flavorless oil is what you want on here. Don't be shy with it. Then, you're going to take the batter and on to the grill. Now, for Japanese people watching this, I'm sure you're horrified by what I'm doing here. I don't know why exactly. Because if I knew how to do it right, I wouldn't do this. Whatever it is that I'm doing wrong. So you're just making yourself a pancake. Bring up the edges to shape it into the shape that you want. I wonder how many I can get on here. Not so bad. And then they're just gonna sit there and cook and cook and cook. I think I'm gonna add a little pepper to the top of these. I don't know that it's necessary, but you know, a little pepper can't hurt. Now, ideally, you would have something to cover this with. 
and I don't really have a lid for this thing, so I'm going to use foil, but before you do that, you're going to put on your, oh, shit, and then I did it the wrong way. All right, that way. So that's why I left one side uncooked, because I want the other side to fry when I put this down. Normally, of course, this is some sort of like dead pig carcass or something on the top of here. Um, but, you know, that's gross. So we're doing it this way. Then, now covering it up is gonna allow some of that heat to uh, cook the top at the same time. So you can see we're starting to get some cooking at the top there. And then you're going to want to flip them. So, you know, I think I'm just going to oil up a bit in between here because I want these these uh, little quinoa things to brown up nice. So, now, this is the trick, eh? Take and over. Oh, look at that. Fucking lovely. And over. I'm going to beat that. Now they're not going to take quite as long on the second side, but, you know, give them a good amount of time to crisp up because there's no harm in, in going a little bit too far with the cooking as long as you're not burning it. And while you're waiting, don't forget to drink more sake. It's not going to turn out unless you do. On a traditional one of these, you'd have like uh, all the things I've been talking about, plus you'd have uh, nori, but you know, these things, I think, would be delicious on top. These are these little strips. I don't know if you've seen these before. These are freaking awesome. They're like little strips of nori. They're super thin. They're usually roasted, and they've got like a little bit of an oily layer on them. Oh, very good. You just pick up a little bit of white rice with them, and super delicious. And, mmm, you can eat them on your own. They're crazy good. And, bonus, look at that. Silica gel, that goes directly into the silica gel jar. Cause you know, silica gel plus sodium hydroxide equals water glass. I'm gonna do it, saving up. All right, these have been going long enough so we're gonna have a look underneath here. Oh yeah, that's pretty good looking I think. Now, again, you can put anything you want on these things because that's the way it works. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that fried up veg. I know, Japanese people are going crazy now, watching me do this. Bulldog sauce, just like that. And then, mayonnaise. Oh, how fun is that, eh? Look at that. And that's a full meal in itself, right there. Cultural appropriation at its best. And if you're so inclined, some green onion. The amount of enjoyment you're gonna get out of this is gonna be directly proportional to the amount of sake you drank before. It's true. Well, I gotta say that was pretty decent. Not without flaws, though. Nothing ever is. So, in a retrospect, I think I would have cooked these both sides and left them off of here. And the reason is, if you embed them in here and then flip it over, because even though these are fairly thin, they're not thin enough. They're not like a piece of pork. So uh, they don't transfer the heat quite as well. And then it didn't quite cook, as, you know, like this did on both sides. So. That's one thing you might want to try. On the plus side, nobody went hungry, nobody got the meat sweats, and we made it through another day. Thanks for watching. Cheers, everyone.